I'm Caden Ritchie, and this is my presentation on the Battle of Okinawa. In this presentation, I'll be discussing the um the causes of the war of the battle, the results of the battle, um what was at stake, um the the death toll and other things that were important to the um the battle's history. An overview. The Battle of Okinawa was considered one of the hardest fought battles in all of World War Two. It lasted over three months, and it involved some of the most brutal kamikaze attacks that were in the war. Um, it was also called the largest sea land air battle. Um, another name for the um the battle was Operation. Uh, Operation Iceberg, which was launched by the Allied forces. The goal of Operation Iceberg was to conquer Okinawa, which is pretty obvious as it was the Battle of Okinawa, and that is what your main goal in, in a battle normally is. And it was considered to be the ultimate struggle of the Pacific War, as it was it was it was a lot, it was one of the last battles of the Pacific War. Actually, it was the last battle of the Pacific War. And that is why it kind of was the the um, ultimate struggle, as it was the um, the last one. <laughs> and then here's a map of like what the United or the um like how the Battle of or the Pacific War kind of went, like how all these islands that were conquered and on their way to eventually Okinawa, which was the last stop of the United States, as you can see on the map. The countries involved. The battle was between the United States and Japan. The United States Marine Corps and the United States Army were the two main branches used in the battle, and they were fighting mainly against the Imperial Japanese Army. The United States used a lot of naval ships on the outskirts of um, the island, as it was. It was a um, it was an, obviously an island that's surrounded by water, and there's a lot of opportunity for um, for um, Marine, for obviously the Marine Corps and like just naval ships to be able to park and or to anchor up and attack the um, the island from the water rather than going out to shore with all the troops, which helped the United States in a big way. The United States Army was used to um, infiltrate the, um, the island as they went ashore and attacked the, uh, the Japanese from shore and um, marched onto the island and um, obviously started the battle at Okinawa. For the Japanese, this battle was a de was kind of a desperate act, and they were really trying to fight off just defeat because they had they were losing the war, and this was kind of the, the last. The last um, stop for the United States as as they were trying as they um, went on to um, eventually defeat Japan, and so the the Japanese really were fighting hard, and it ended up being one of their final efforts of World War Two after after the Battle of Okinawa was captured by the United States. They um they were able to use the the island to um send airstrikes to Japan and eventually just conquer Japan overall. The time period of the Battle of Okinawa. Uh, the battle began on April 1st, 1945, and it lasted all the way until June 22nd, 1945. So, as you can see, it was about a three-month war from April to June. And the battle took place after the war in Europe ended, and it was also at the tail end of the war itself. After the after the um, Battle of Okinawa, the United States were able to, um, like I said, successfully attack Japan, the mainland Japan. And they eventually, this was before, this was only a couple months before, before the um, the bombings of Hiroshima, the famous bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which ended up effectively ending the war for Japan and gave the United States
kind of the win in Japan. <laughs> this battle took place after all of the fighting in Europe had ended, which kind of meant that the, the war was coming to a close and everybody could really kind of sense that while fighting in this battle. At this point, the war had, had taken a toll on everyone who was involved. And this was really one of the last major battles of the war for um for anybody really as the war actually ended in September this battle ended June 22nd so obviously that's only about a couple months before the war ended officially and like i said before the battle this battle took place before the um the United States bomb Nagasaki and Hiroshima which is pretty obvious because that was kind of the end but like the time this this battle to only took place a couple of months, a month and a half before the um the bombings of those cities, which kind of showed how how significant the battle really was. How um because they were able to um actually essentially win the war in large part after just immediately after this the battle of Okinawa ended, which is kind of what they thought they were going to be doing. They thought they were going to be able to do. Location of the battle. The Battle of Okinawa took place on the island of Okinawa, which is in Japan. And it was considered the last stop for the Allied forces as they conquered the chain of islands near Okinawa, which meant that this would be the last place they would need, the last island they would need to conquer before um, putting an attack on mainland Japan and eventually just and beating Japan and making Japan surrender, which was huge and um, the end of the war. And the, the island itself, you can see on this picture, it was, um, it was really like a tropical island, kind of what you'd see in like the Bahamas or Hawaii or something like that, palm trees, a lot of water, blue water. So it was really a tropical island. And <laughs> that posed some problems for the United States as they fought in the battle. The reason that it posed problems for the United States is because they they might not have been used to um the hotness and the, just the the um the climate that was involved in the in the fighting of this battle which the Okinawans and the Jap that the Japanese who were fighting in the battle were probably more accustomed to this type of battle than you know the United States would be when they're their climate back in the United States is more temperate and less probably wet. This is I'm assuming like tropical islands are a little wet, a little more wet than um just a regular land. And this was one of the many battles of the Pacific War. It was also the last. Um, it was a Japanese country, and it's a quite it's quite a ways south of mainland Japan. And you can see that on this map, there's here's Japan and down here is all the way down here is Okinawa, which is quite a ways down there if you think about it. And I'm not exactly sure the um, exact distance, but you can just really see on the map. And the, like this, you can tell why it would be the last stop as well, because there's these islands that you go down here and then eventually you get up to Okinawa. It's the closest island to Japan on this route. <laughs> And due to the location of this battle, it was a very hot and wet island-based battle. And that obviously made it difficult for the United States, as I stated before. They were less accustomed to it than the Japanese and the Okinawans. And that made it obviously harder for them overall. The causes of the battle. The biggest reason that this battle began as the United States knew they could use the land to put an airbase on and attack Japan easier, which was really a huge thing because they were able to um, use, they'd be able to use this airbase against the, Jap the Japanese. And it was also very close to Japan, to mainland Japan. So to have an airbase this close would make it way easier for them to attack them with um, the types of planes that they had. They, they often couldn't fly them very far, but... <clears throat> um, I mean, in comparison to today's technology, they probably couldn't fly them anywhere near as far as they can now, which has made it very easy for them to um, have 
quick travel over to the island and attack Japan. And there were two main objectives for the U.S. in the Pacific Theater, which was the um, the Pacific War. And that was to take out the rest of Japanese merchant fleet. And they also wanted a direct attack on Japan, which after they had gained Okinawa, this that kind of really... After they they gain Okinawa, they would be able to, um, they thought at least, just have a very direct attack on, Jap- on Japan, which would eventually be a, play a huge role in the um, the end of the war. And here's a picture of um, an air base that was, that may have been on Okinawa, may, may have been what an Okinawan air base would have looked like. And also, Okinawa had four airfields the United States wanted to control. And you can see why, because it would allow them to um, obviously attack them easier. And if they controlled these air bases, they would be able to, um, it would be way easier for them to get to Japan. And obviously, like mo- almost all battles in the history of war, the Battle of Okinawa began because the United States knew they would benefit greatly from gaining the territory, which is pretty obvious. And the reason why is, is they wanted to be able to attack Japan easier. And also, like I said, they would be able to use Okinawa to attack, attack Japan, which is kind of a it's kind of a given. But almost all battles, I mean, obviously, all battles that really start is because they start because somebody wants land and somebody sees the land as valuable and they kind of just try and go take it, which is kind of just how it works. And here's a picture of what a, um, a plane might have looked like on Okinawa at the time. Strategy for the United States. The United States used mainly naval forces. Obviously, it was an island battle, and they used a lot of navy ships to um, attack the the Japanese and Okinawa because it it made sense to have boats outside of the island um, to attack uh, Japan. And the United States ma- planned to take over the eastern part of the island, and after that, they would go north from there. Here's kind of like a uh, map. This is kind of at the tail end of the of the battle. As you can see, it's just June tenth, June twelfth, June nineteenth is the last thing. But this kind of showed the United States movement across the island and how they were really trying to attack the the island and the Okinawans who were or the Japanese who were protecting the island. <clears throat> Another thing that the United States wanted to do was gain control of the surrounding islands before they actually attacked Okinawa, which they were able to do, and they had control of a lot of, of almost all of the islands that were around Okinawa at the time, which allowed them to use those islands as a port and as um, just somewhere to fall back on or to um, send tre- troops from, which was huge in the, um, the outcome of the battle. Strategy for the Japanese. Japan's general, Ushijima's strategy, was to keep his troops in secure fortifications on the south side of the island. So, General Ushijima was really on the defensive, and he kind of just wanted to um, keep the, the troops safe and wait for the United States to attack, and then he would, and then they would defend and fight hard against them when they did attack. Which, um, worked in part as they were able to fight off the U.S. at first, and then eventually the U.S. just was too much for them. And they also used kamikaze attacks on the U.S. forces, which they believed these attacks would cause a lot of damage to the U.S., and they would eventually just give up on Okinawa and retreat back. Well, however, these attacks um, did not really work like that. They, um... They did cause a ton of damage to United States boats and all that kind of stuff, but 
they also cause a lot of damage to the Japanese because a kamikaze attack really is a suicide attack. And they, they lost a lot of planes, a lot of men doing these types of attacks. So while it did cause a lot of damage to the United States, it also harmed the um, Japanese in a big way. So that made it um, tough for the Japanese. And they also had a system of tunnels that were used to protect against these attacks as the tunnels were, um, they were dug into the ground and the United States had trouble like locating exactly where the, um, the Japanese were on the island due to these tunnels because the Japanese would often be hiding in the tunnels. And here's a demonstration of what a kamikaze attack might have looked like at the time. There's a plane flying, it causes a huge explosion on this, on this naval ship, it looks like. All right, what was that state? The United States and the Allied forces wanted to take control of Okinawa because it would be beneficial in its last push on Japan, which, like I've said, it, it really would allow them to attack Japan easier and send and it would give them a, a port to keep boats and other things like that it would allow them to um, have troops on the island waiting to go and attack mainland japan which i'm sure you could tell could be very very beneficial in how a battle how a war could end if they control most of your your island territories and ports then it would make it tough for for you to um to do much with that and it would also give the allied forces an air base obviously that would make it easier to attack japan and it kind of just allowed the once you control once they controlled the um the island they were able to send troops over there and they had all this land that they could just keep troops on and wait for the right time to strike. The island would also provide a blockade or capturing the island, conquering the island for the United States would also, it would also provide a blockade from important Japanese logistical routes, which would mean that they wouldn't be able to manufacture as many weapons or anything like that because they didn't have these, these routes to fought to go in get the materials that they needed to uh, manufacture a lot of these weapons. Like, maybe ships. They, they wouldn't be able to, to get the materials to create ships, um, just guns, other things like that, as if, they're, if they're, um, their roots were blocked off in order to get the, the metal or the um, other things that they needed to manufacture these things. It also provide an anchorage for the Allied fleets and the naval ships, which would be huge because they could send boats over there and have them pretty much safely. Um, well, nothing was safe at the time, but it was it was pretty secure for them to just have their boats anchored up there as they controlled the islands nearby and this island. And for Japan. Losing this territory would end up being detrimental to, to their success in the war because this was the last island that they had control of. And once they lost this island, they really didn't have anything to, um, I mean, mainland, they had mainland Japan, but they didn't have any other islands that they could attack from, which ended up being huge in how the war ended for the Japanese. The cost of the battle. The Battle of Okinawa, like many other battles involved in World War II, is a very bloody one. Obviously, World War II is one of the most deadly and destructive. It was really the most deadly and destructive battle, or the battle, or the war, most deadly and destructive war in the history of war. As bom nuclear bombs were dropped, um, whole cities were being wiped out. It was really a lot of chaos that was going on at the time and damage was being done to um, the 
the whole world really as the whole world was involved that's why it's called world war <laughs> but um so many people die there's it was really just um a horrible time period for the world itself but for the united states around forty nine thousand people were either wounded or killed and 12,500 of those people were either dead or missing. So you could see that, that it, it had taken a toll even on the United States, even though they, they would end up winning the battle. That is still 50,000 people is a lot of a lot of soldiers to lose. And obviously Okinawa was devastated and it was mostly just lead and rubble as gunshots or fired for months bombs being dropped on them for months it was just explosions everywhere there's just so much so much uh destruction and devastation to the island and you could assume it was probably once a pretty nice island as it was on the i it was it was i mean obviously all islands are pretty nice but um I mean, it wouldn't be as industrialized as certain islands, but this it was probably a pretty beautiful island that kind of just went to went to ash after the battle. Um, the Okinawan people suffered as about as about one hundred fifty thousand civilians killed, and this was significant because the population of the island was before the battle was around. 300,000 people, so an entire country getting half of its uh, civilians wiped out is huge, and that is, um, that is a, those are staggering numbers. And, uh, obviously, those are just insane numbers, and these are just not even fighters that are in the war necessarily, these are just civilians that were affected by the bombs being dropped, and just gunshot gunshots everywhere all these types of things and the japanese who were def yeah and the japanese who were defending the island saw a death toll of around 110,000 people and obviously about half of the okinawan population was wiped out in the battle like i said before but 110,000 people Compared to the United States, 49,000, that is double the amount, which is a huge amount in the grand scheme of things as they actually having double of you, having double deaths than the opponent you're fighting against really implicates that you lost the war out of the battle, which they did, obviously. It was considered the bloodiest land, air, sea battle in American military history. And here's like a chart. Uh, it shows the, the deaths of people on the island uh, throughout the war on different dates and how many like died. It was actually per week, it looks like. So, kind of interesting. The United States key leaders. Simon B. Buckner Jr. was the general during World War II and he was promoted to Command the 10th Army during Operation Iceberg. He was killed on June 18, 1945. Um, he, he also his, he was also the son of Simon B. Buckner, who was a general in um I want to say the Civil War, but he was, definitely was in World War One. I. I think he was also in the Civil War. He was also involved in the War Hero. Actually, that wouldn't make sense. But he was a um, he was involved in World War One. A war hero at the time and Roy Geiger took control of the 10th army after Buck Buckner was killed so he was actually the leader when um when Buckner was killed or when the United States actually ended up winning the battle as you can see June 18th is only about four days before the end of the battle which was on June 22nd which kind of is interesting that he died on the last days of the battle and Chester Nimitz was the commander in chief of the Pacific Fleet for the United States. He really controlled all the boats and um, ships that were involved in the battle. And 
Yeah. Here's a picture of um, Simon B. Buckner Jr., who's the general. The leaders of the battle were the Japanese, were General Mitsuru Ushijima, who was a Japanese army commander during the invasion, and he led skillful defense against the United States troops. He was the one that wanted the, the Japanese to stay um, safe to insecure fortifications and kind of hide from the United States and eventually um, defend and, and trying to defend their um, the country, Okinawa. General Isamu Cho was the chief of staff, and he also lived by the code of the samurai, so he was a very noble Japanese man, as the samurai is very respected in Japan. And <clears throat> Colonel Hirochimichi Yahara was the man who formed the defense against the U.S. strategy. And he was his plan was to wear down the U.S. forces, so he was kind of like the person behind the the, st- the strategy, the defensive strategy for the Japanese. And Ushijima was just the leader, and he um, was the figure that kind of led the Japanese through the battle. And here is a battle. Here is a picture of General Mitsuru Ushijima. Um, a brief timeline of the battle. So, on March 24th the, to 31, 1945, the U.S. began pre-invasion, which means they were just kind of stocking up for the war. They were getting ready, or the battle, they were getting ready to um, attack Okinawa. And they were just kind of getting, making sure they had all their ducks in a row. They were trying to just really just prepare to obviously attack, attack Okinawa. On April 1st, the United States first entered the island and they sent troops. This, this was the first time they had sent troops onto the island and they had kind of set up all their, um, all their uh, stations and ships and stuff outside of the, or on the outskirts of the island uh, in the water. And on April 6th, the kamikaze attacks from, J- from Japan began, or from the Japanese began which this played a huge, this caused a lot of devastation to the United States, but the United States were able to pretty much just be resilient off from these um, attacks. Um, On May 29th, the United States took control of the Shuri Castle, which was a huge turning point in in the battle, which they, when they were able to capture or take control of the castle, this really allowed them to have control a lot of the, of, this was a huge part of the island and this kind of allowed them to gain control of the island overall. <laughs> and then on June 10th, the U.S. offered surrender to the Japanese, which they turned down as they really didn't want to surrender to the United States, no matter how bad it got. They, they wanted to keep fighting to the death and they believed that that was more respectable than to surrender. On June 22nd was the death of Commander Ushijima, which eventually, or essentially marked the end of the war, or the end of the battle for the, for the Japanese. And that kind of was a, a symbol for the end. And on June 22nd, the battle actually ended officially, which is on the same day that Commander Ushijima died. And here's like, a picture or a visual of what the um, what the island or what the timeline might have looked like, and <coughs> the, the, the uh, this says here that on June twenty first, the U.S. general actually announced that Okinawa had been secured. So that was kind of interesting that it that was a day before the the end of the battle actually was. All right, so one of the fam- most famous attacks of this battle was Hacksaw Ridge. It was also called the Meta Escarpment, and it was, all- it was located on top of a 400-foot ver- vertical cliff, as you can kind of see right here. There's a huge cliff. And 
This attack began on April 26th, and it lasted a few, uh, about a week or so. Um, the Japanese dug in in caves and, bu- and bunkers in defense, but uh, eventually the United States forces were just too strong for the Japanese to um, stay hiding, stay secure against the, the attacks. Um, United States naval art- artillery used, or they, they used naval artillery to soften the ridge before you were using soldiers on land to attack the Japanese. So they would send airstrikes and bombs onto the onto the ridge before the United States actually went and attacked, in order to, um, kind of take out some of the Japanese and make them more easy to um, fight against for the soldiers that were on foot. One famous figure from that attack on Hacksaw Ridge, this private Desmond Doss. Desmond is known for being a conscientious objector, and he did not carry a firearm. So that was very, that was very unnatural at the time, and nobody really, everybody kind of was like, they didn't really know what he was really about they thought he was kind of a coward for not carrying a gun when in fact he was really the opposite of a coward and desmond saved 75 wounded soldiers on the ridge and he was eventually awarded the united states medal of medal of honor which is obviously the highest honor you can the highest award you can get as a u.s soldier and here's a picture of desmond Dawes during the war or during the battle Probably. The United States ended up taking Hacksaw Ridge on May 6th, which was about 10 days after the, um, it was a couple weeks after the, the battle, the attack actually started, which you could see how extensive the, the attack was because of that, that, um, two week period that it took. And it was estimated that around 4,900 people were ki- soldiers were killed on Hacksaw Ridge for both the um, countries involved. And so obviously it was a very, it was pretty bloody, bloody battle. 5,000 people dying in a couple of weeks is a lot of people. And there was eventually a major motion picture made about Hacksaw Ridge in 2016. It was supposed to say not 2006. But, um, it's a pretty good movie, and it's pretty histori- It's pretty historical, ac- historically accurate, at least for the um, just what it is. It's just about. It's mainly about Desmond Doss and his his um struggles as he. Well, the main character is Desmond Doss, and his it was his struggles. It just kind of showed his struggles leading up to the war and how it kind of went. You should check it out. Um. Conclusions. Eventually, the United States forces were able to overtake Okinawa, and this helped the United States attack Japan, obviously. Um, this played a huge role in ending World War II, as the United States were able to get within striking range of Japan, making it easier for them to attack Japan and bomb Japan. And eventually, the United States dropped two nuclear bombs, which were the only two nu- nuclear bombs that were ever involved in war to this day. And on Japanese cities, which effectively put an end to the war, once they bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they, um, that eventually just, it made the Japanese bo- know that <laughs> they couldn't win the war. They didn't have enough firepower to beat the United States. And due to that, or really this, the reason that they were able to do that is because they had conquered all the islands, um, around Japan and they really believed once they, they got, uh, Okinawa, they would get Japan, which ended up happening. Many Japanese soldiers didn't want to surrender to the United States. And they believed that the United States should not be able to take them as prisoners. So they chose to take their own lives, which was, it was, it was looked at, as, it was looked at by them as kind of a noble act to, um, not surrender 
in war, but to just fight to the death. That's what they really wanted to do. And they made that possible. Well, kind of sad, but they made it possible by taking their own lives. At least that's that they saw that to be more respectable than to um, surrender to the United States. Uh, General Ushijima and his chief of staff, General Cho, actually committed ritual of suicide on June 22nd, 1945, which ended the battle. And that was obviously Cho was a, um, he was a samurai. And so he believed that that was very respectable for him to um, go out that way instead of um, surrendering to the United States. Overall, the Battle of Okinawa was a very bloody and took a toll on everyone involved, obviously, as the civilians were killed, the island was torn apart, and soldiers were, were killed or wounded. It really was just brutal war battle for everybody. And gaining this territory was a huge win for the United States, and they were soon able to force Japan to surrender due to gaining all this territory around Japan. Um, this battle, like many others during World War II, was brutal for everybody, and it kind of also wrapped up the war. It was one of the last major battles of the war. That's why I believe that this battle was so significant. Obviously, all the other battles leading up to this battle were also huge, but this was really kind of put the, the, the war to the end, to an end, almost. And here's my work cited. Thank you for watching.